Hey guys, Tyler here. When it comes to modern science fiction, there's hardly a more ubiquitous trope than that of the parallel universe. From Star Trek's alternate reality to Fringe's Amberverse to the Marvel Cinematic Universe and more, the concept of multiple realities has offered a wealth of storytelling opportunities. But the multiverse is, after all, a real scientific concept. Kind of. You see, the multiverse hypothesis sits in a rather unique position when it comes to the nature of cosmology. It's a serious topic in theoretical physics, often presented as a solution to weird phenomena in quantum mechanics. But it's also incredibly philosophical since it seeks to explain why we exist in the first place, since our universe seems to be fine-tuned for life. In fact, many scientists consider the multiverse to be untestable. In this video, I'd like to answer the question, is the multiverse really unscientific? Let's find out. Early ideas about the concept of infinite worlds, particularly in ancient times, often thought of them as successive, not coexistent. Think infinite big bangs and infinite big crunches on a cycle. It wasn't until the mid 20th century that the modern interpretation of many worlds, the many worlds interpretation of quantum mechanics, helped solidify the concept in popular culture. Many Worlds was first proposed by physicist Hugh Everett in 1957, with Bryce DeWitt popularizing it and giving it its name in the 1970s. Essentially, Many Worlds asserts that the universal wave function, the quantum state or probability distribution of outcomes for all events in the entire universe, is objectively real. In other words, everything that can happen does happen in a parallel universe. Thus, there is no wave function collapse, a central tenet of the Copenhagen interpretation of quantum mechanics, as illustrated by the Schrodinger's cat thought experiment. In the thought experiment, a cat is placed in a closed box along with a flask of poison and radioactive source. If a Geiger counter detects the decay of a single atom, the flask is shattered, which releases the poison and kills the cat. Under the Copenhagen interpretation, the cat can be thought of as being both alive and dead simultaneously until observed. It's in a superposition until reality collapses into one of two outcomes. Many worlds attempts to resolve this paradox and many other paradoxes in quantum theory by invoking quantum decoherence, or the loss of coherence between quantum states. As long as a definite phase relation exists exists between two states, a system is said to be coherent. The act of measurement itself is considered to be a key driver of decoherence, which is why quantum states must be isolated in order to be preserved. There's still controversy to this day as to whether decoherence actually solves the so-called measurement problem, which is the uncertainty of when exactly the wave function does collapse. This is why, while many worlds has gained traction over over the years, the Copenhagen interpretation hasn't been entirely discredited. Importantly, each interpretation differs in how it treats the observer. Under Copenhagen, the observer is completely separate from the system she is observing, whereas under many worlds, the observer and system being observed are all part of the same wave equation. Not only is the observed system in a superposition, everything is. Rather than the wave function collapsing inside the proverbial box under many worlds every time an observation is made, the universe splits into multiple universes. Because observation-like events are constantly happening, there is an enormous and growing number of coexistent universes. Like I said, many worlds has gained traction over the years in the scientific community because of how neatly it resolves certain issues with quantum theory. Its big proponents hail it as the key to explaining both the contents of quantum mechanics and the appearance of the world, as Everett put it. So, in a way, a theory of everything. Many worlds is realist, meaning it functions independently of the mind. 
deterministic in that all possible futures are already laid out, and local in that it emphasizes how objects are only affected by their immediate surroundings. However, the Copenhagen interpretation is still the dominant one, with many worlds often considered to be too neat of a solution. Once again, many worlds is often derided as untestable, and thus unfalsifiable, falsifiability being a key determinant as to whether a hypothesis is scientific. That's not to say that many haven't tried, or at least try to argue, that it is testable. David Deutsch, for example, example, has cited the interference pattern of the double slit experiment as evidence of the interference of photons from parallel universes. Somebody called Dr. Walter Bishop. You are looking through a window into another world. Of course, even many scientists who don't totally disavow many worlds don't totally embrace it either. The fact that there's still a big gaping hole as to how this all connects to general relativity is a major issue. In fact, it's been suggested that the parallel universes themselves are merely an artifact of incomplete mathematical descriptions of quantum states. It's been argued that since macroscopic objects are significantly different from microscopic objects, using these same equations to describe them in one fell swoop, as it were, is a mistake. The fact that, unlike in science fiction, communication between parallel universes is impossible has led many to consider their existence unworthy of investigation. Nevertheless, a poll of leading quantum cosmologists and other quantum theorists in the early 1990s showed 58% support for many worlds. Among the believers, none other than the likes of Stephen Hawking and Richard Feynman. But subsequent polls mostly show many worlds being the second most favored behind Copenhagen or even the least favored behind other interpretations like the universe being information-based. And even though Hugh Everett fully believed until his death that parallel universes were real, even Hawking has said that he didn't actually think that they are, but that many worlds simply provides a clean way of calculating conditional probabilities, the likelihood that A will happen given B. Searches for evidence of a parallel universe gravitationally influenced influencing our own, such as analysis of microwave map data from the Planck satellite, have yielded nothing significant. And of course, absurdly improbable timelines are one side effect of many worlds, though cosmologist Max Tegmark has affirmed that unlikely events would still be rare and wouldn't violate the laws of physics. Besides universes that split upon observation of a quantum state, there are other types of multiverses that have been described. Tegmark classifies universes into four levels. The first level is an extension of our universe beyond the cosmic cosmological horizon, where the laws of physics remain the same. Given infinite space, there would be infinite volumes of space identical to our own. The second level includes universes with different physical constants, which would have arisen from pockets of space that stop stretching under cosmic inflation. The third level is basically the many worlds interpretation, but unlike doppelgangers in a level 1 universe, level 3 doppelgangers occupy infinite dimensions of the space we live in. Finally, the fourth level unites all the lower levels under a mathematically pure theory of everything. String theorist Brian Green also discusses nine types of multiverses. A quilted multiverse is essentially akin to an infinite universe as in Tegmark's level 1. An inflationary universe is essentially akin to Tegmark's level 2. A brain multiverse involves universes that float within a higher dimensional bulk. The cyclic multiverse is an extension of this, where collisions happen regularly as universes repel and attract each other at intervals, causing Big Bangs. The landscape multiverse invokes aspects of string theory, where quantum fluctuations create pockets with different physical laws. The quantum multiverse is like Tegmark's level 3 in the Many Worlds interpretation. The holographic multiverse derives from the theory that a space's volume can be encoded on the surface of an object like a black hole. The simulated multiverse is, well, what it sounds like, the simulation hypothesis. And the ultimate multiverse is like Tegmark's level 4. Furthermore, other models suggest our universe may have a twin composed primarily of antimatter, 
much like the Star Trek episode, The Alternative Factor. Okay, so we've discussed a lot of different theories so far, and honestly most, if not all of them, probably sound like they have a more reasonable explanation besides infinite branching universes. And perhaps this is the case, but quantum mechanics has one more trick up its sleeve. The fine-tuning argument. As I alluded to earlier in this video, the multiverse is a convenient way to explain why our universe seems to be fine-tuned for the existence of life, particularly the existence of conscious life to observe it. If there were infinite universes, each possibly with different physical laws, then by definition only a fraction would have the right conditions suitable for the development of matter, astronomical objects, and elemental diversity long enough for life to emerge. Many Worlds invokes the weak anthropic principle, which states that the universe's apparent fine-tuning is the result of selection bias among a population of many universes. This is in contrast to the strong anthropic principle, in which the universe is compelled by its very nature to produce conscious life in order to observe it. According to many worlds, we just happen to live in a universe that allows us to exist, because we kind of have to by definition, regardless of its low probability. Frankly, I consider this to be the most compelling evidence for a multiverse. If the laws of physics were even just subtly different, if the nuclear binding energy that holds atoms together were a bit off, for example, we wouldn't exist yet we do. But I also think it's risky to conclude that our existence necessitates infinite parallel universes. I find myself drawn to the idea that there probably is some missing component of our theories of quantum mechanics that precludes the existence of parallel worlds. Experts are also divided on how to apply Occam's razor, the simplest explanation usually being the right one, to the multiverse hypothesis. The absurdity of infinite unobservable realities just to explain our own, versus the pure simplicity of many worlds' mathematical solutions, there's a reason that this debate hasn't ended. Before we go, I want to offer some thoughts. Assuming that we don't find direct proof of a parallel universe tomorrow or even in our lifetimes, does any of this really matter at a personal level? Sure, it's important to investigate the nature of reality, but odds are there's only one of you and me. We shouldn't lose sight of that and we shouldn't let the possibility of alternate timelines prevent us from living in the present of this one. As of now, there's only one timeline that we can interact with, one world and one humanity. We need to focus on our own lives and the lives of those in our community to help make this world a better place. There's nothing wrong with indulging other possible worlds if for no other reason than to guide us in our own moral existence. That's the strength, in my view, of good fiction that tackles real, serious themes. And as for regretting your mistakes, well, We've all been there, but as they say, you can't change the past. You can only learn from it. Here's to hoping that we can learn something, anything, to help us leave this world in an improved state from the way we first observed it. Thank you all so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a thumbs up down below and don't forget to share it. That stuff really helps me out. If you haven't subscribed yet, be sure to do that as well so you won't miss future uploads and click the bell icon to receive all notifications. If you want to support my work even further, becoming a patron or a member is a great way to do so. Links to those, as well as my social media and merch store, are in the description. That's all I have for this week. I'll see you next time. Thank you.